Sippers. I'm Renee. I'm Martia. And I'm Demetrius. And we are Sip and Unwind. We are a true crime podcast that focuses on life, love, relationship, and everything else in between. Hey, Martia. Hey, Demetrius. How are you guys doing? Hey, ladies. I'm hey. doing great. Hey, Sippers. Hey, we back for another episode. We back. I'm getting excited. I like new episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, we back again. We back. <laughs> well, you know, even though it's like some sad, you know, circumstances that we're talking about, but still, I get excited. You know, I like recording with these ladies, and we have we have a good time. You know, it's always yes. a fun time. Always, yeah. it's the stuff you don't get that we really laugh <laughs> at. Okay, you the know, before, in between, and the yep, after. Yep. So. <laughs> Welcome sippers and new sippers, old sippers, all the other sippers. And if you don't have any sipper friends, um, go make some. That means share our stuff. If you haven't already, you know, get it out there. We want to um, grow and be bigger and bigger. And we appreciate all the support that we've gotten so far, but we're just trying to keep keep the train moving on this one. Yeah. So do you guys have your drinks together? Do you have it poured? Because if you are a sipper, then you should know by now you should already have your drink poured before you hit that play button. So I'm just going to assume that you guys have your drinks out there. And what we, before we get our, um, before we talk about our true crime of this week, I'm going to tell you about what I'm drinking on. Ooh. So the ladies of Sippin' and Wine and a few other friends, we went to a wine tasting tour over the weekend. Mm-hmm. And yes, and we had, uh, it was in North Georgia. It was so, so much fun. It was, it was a perfect, you know, getaway little, you know, mini trip that we did. And I'm drinking something from the wine tour that we got. It's called Southern Sass. And it was, it was oh, actually, that one, that one was a good, fl- it was, oh. it was like all of us, we all bought the same <laughs> bottle. <laughs> we should have like a party and just like, <laughs> drink the same you know everybody just um take theirs to the head but yeah all of us probably I think all of us got that one didn't we that was the one that tasted like peach right right that was yes, that yes, I peach. did get it oh yeah oh, oh yeah my I should have got more than one but yes I got one did you already <laughs> open yours not yet sis oh okay uh-uh and sippers <laughs> let me tell you it's so smooth okay it was, mm-hmm. it's oh, good okay. yeah <laughs> It is so good. Um, and it actually has a lot of alcohol in it. Well, I wouldn't say a lot of alcohol, but it's 13%, which mm-hmm. is, you know, pretty high. That's a good the, amount. Yeah, pretty high <laughs> for wine. So um, I'm not even sure if you can buy that in the store or probably not, but I'm sure they have some that taste something like that that's in the store. But um, since this was from a winery, I think this is their own. I think they stuck their own label on it. So it might have been yeah. stuff that. <laughs> Look, it might have been some stuff that was at the store that you can buy at the store, but they <laughs> just <laughs> slapped their own label on it. So, mm-hmm. you know, we would have to buy it from them, you know, to get the exact thing that we're looking for. But yeah, right. so if you guys haven't looked at our um, IG page, we have a couple of pictures on there. I think we do, right? Do we? I know um, we put up one, but I'm not sure. Um, we have a whole lot of pictures. We need to go put a whole bunch of them up there. <laughs> yeah, we took a lot of pictures. We have a lot of good pictures. So you guys head over to our IG page and, you know, look at those pictures. But yeah, so Martia, Demetrius, what are y'all drinking on? Well, I'm also drinking one of the bottles that I purchased that down that Girl, trip. you bought about, what, four, five, <laughs> six? How many? <laughs> I only bought three bottles, sis. I went to three different wineries. I bought three oh, bottles. <laughs> gosh, I wish I would have got more, though. I really do wish. Now that I'm, you know, back, I wish I would have probably bought maybe like four or five bottles, but I just didn't. <laughs> Yeah, the wine, I, I didn't taste a wine that I didn't like that day. So the one I purchased, or this one I'm drinking, is called Old Blue, Georgia Old Blue. Ooh, and it's yeah. from the, it was from the Curahee Vineyard. Is that the wine? second yeah. one? Yeah, that was I the blueberry. Was the oh, yes, exactly. It's okay. a blueberry wine. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I can't I remember. tasted that one. Oh, mm-hmm. man, it was so good. I can't remember the alcohol content of this one, but I do remember Um, it was probably around 10 or 11 percent. It was something okay. like that. Yeah, I think I remember it was. all the alcohol, um, all the wines that we tasted had a pretty decent alcohol content. So, yeah, this one is really good. I've had a blueberry wine before, but I must say that this one is much better. So I wish mm-hmm. I had purchased two bottles of this one. I don't think I've tasted a blueberry wine before, actually. It, yeah, that one was I pretty good. I might put that on my to-do list. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah that's pretty good. Demetrius, what did you got? Well, I have today a margarita wine cocktail. Oh, that sounds good. I purchased it at my local Publix. You can go there and get it, guys. Um, 
if you have a Publix near you. What's the name of it? It's called Margarita Wine Cocktail. And it's Ooh. by Rancho Rancho La. That's huh. what it says, Rancho La. Uh-huh. So <laughs> is it one of those frozen ones or is it? No, it's in a oh, bottle. Okay. Oh. And it's 13.9% alcohol. By, so I don't know if anybody want to get that strong. Child, Wait a minute. Hold on, hold up, hold up. <laughs> I need to I need to purchase that one. Yeah, and it's oh. not a big bottle. It's in the little small little uh bottles. It's like maybe a let me see what it say on this one. 187 ml, so maybe like a 6 ounce almost. Hmm, okay. So yeah, it's good though. Whew. I'm feeling Gosh. good over here. <laughs> We might all be tipsy by the end of this episode. <laughs> I put a little lime juice in it though, like a little lime and egg. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Do you have fruit in it like you usually do? No, this oh, one don't be. Okay. It's on the rocks. It's okay. on the rocks. <laughs> you know, you'd be fancy over there. You really do. You be yeah, this it sound one is real good. good. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's get into this story, I guess. Uh Um, So in today's episode, we're going to tell you about a story coming from Highland Heights, Kentucky. But before we get into the star of the show, Miss, uh, about Miss um, Shana Hubers, let me tell you about Ryan Poston first. He was born December 30th, 1982 in Fort Mitchell, Kentucky to Jay and Lisa Poston. His parents later divorced and when he was young, Oh, wait a minute. His, pa- his parents later divorced when he was young and his mom remarried a man named Peter Carter. Ryan loved his stepdad, Peter, so much that later he changed his middle name to his stepdad's last name. So it made him Ryan Carter Poston. Ryan's biological parents were able to come together and spend holidays together as a blended family. So it made it very um, easy for him growing up with his parents and his um, step parents there. Um, This gave him a stable and happy upbringing. Um, You can say that Ryan and his three siblings were, quote unquote, well off because they grew up in a very well-known and well-connected family in Northern Kentucky. Um, Ryan later moved to the Philippines and then to Switzerland with his mother, stepdad, and his sisters. He graduated high school from the International School of Geneva. Sounds fancy, right? The International School of Geneva. And then after graduation, Ryan and his family returned to the States back to Kentucky. So now that he was back in the States, him and his biological father were able to spend more time together, um, you know, since he's back in the States because his father didn't go, you know, to Switzerland. It was just him and his stepdad and his family. They had a very close relationship. They were so close that Ryan's father, Jay, would go over to Ryan's condo and clean up while Ryan was busy with school and work. Um, Sounds kind of like something a mother would do <laughs> to their son, you know, go over and yeah. do laundry and stuff. But <laughs> the <Wow>. dad actually <laughs> went over there and cleaned his son's house or his little condo while he was, you know, doing school, which is kind of cute, I guess. Most women considered Ryan the total package since he was considered extremely attractive, very ambitious, successful, and smart. Ryan also developed a love for guns after high school and became an avid gun collector and enthusiast. Ryan graduated from Indiana University with his bachelor's degree. He was super smart, as I said. He graduated, um, he triple majored in history, geography, and political science. Like, I never knew that that was a thing, that you can have a triple major. I've heard of double, either. yeah, I've, I've heard, heard of double, double major. Yeah, it. I've heard of double majors, but a triple major, <laughs> so yeah, okay, in history, geography, and political science. So he was he was kind of bad. Okay. Um, you know, he then went to law school at Northern Kentucky University in Highland Heights, Kentucky. After graduating law school, he began working as a lawyer in Cincinnati. In 2009, Ryan met a girl named Lauren Worley. She was a current law student at the same university Ryan graduated from, Northern Kentucky U., They fell in love and moved in together. They even adopted two puppies while they were together, but unfortunately they broke up in 2011. After the breakup, Ryan's cousin Carissa suggested that he talk to one of her friends named Shana Hubers. Shana was 19 at the time. Ryan went through Shana's spring break pictures on Facebook and he liked what he saw. So the two began conversing. When they met in March of 2011, Shana was finishing up her degree in psychology at the University of Kentucky. She lived in Lexington, Kentucky, which was about 85 miles away from Ryan's condo in Highland Heights, Kentucky. 
Shana was known to be very smart, acing all of her advanced placement classes and graduating with honors. Along with being known for being super smart, she was also known to not take breakups very well. Shana and Ryan's relationship only lasted for about 18 months, but within that time frame, their relationship was described as turbulent from friends. Shana was known to be threatened by Ryan's ex-girlfriend, Lauren. Ryan's and Shana's relationship was fueled by jealousy, frequent fights, cheating accusations, and they broke up and made up many times. Shana even hacked into Ryan's Facebook page and started to block females and sent random messages to his friends. So in the spring of 2012, Ryan opened his own practice and started to fulfill his dream of providing legal help to those who could, who could not afford it. He was doing great career-wise, but was miserable in a toxic relationship with frequent fights. Shana's behavior began to get more and more obsessive and it was alarming to family, friends, coworkers, and even some of his neighbors who could hear them fighting through the walls. Ryan even said at one point he became scared of her. They continued their toxic cycle of emotional breakups and reconciliations like a yo-yo. It was said that one night in April, Shana refused to leave Ryan's condo and he eventually became so irritated he tossed her purse out into the hallway and then picked her up and carried her out as well. In the fall of 2012, a 21-year-old Shana started working on her master's degree in psychology. On October 1st, Ryan then 29 years old, took Shana to the gun range with him to practice shooting. Wow. Shana, you know, Shana then texted her girlfriend while, you know, they was about to go to the gun range. And she said, quote, when I go to the shooting range with Ryan tonight, I want to turn around and shoot him and kill him and play like it's an accident, end quote. This is what she texted her friend on October 1st. What in the world? Yeah. Who it's, talks like that? Right, right. Oh my God. Um, so during this same month, Ryan decided that he didn't want to be with Shana anymore. And unbeknownst to her, he also, or at least he thought that she didn't know that Ryan started talking to other women. One of these women were Miss Ohio, Audrey Bolt. On October 11th, 2012, Shana went to Ryan's parents' house for dinner and they watched the presidential debates. Ryan told his dad that he was planning on ending the relationship with Shana. After dinner, Ryan and Shana returned to his condo. Ryan started the process of distancing himself from her by letting her know that he couldn't spend time with her that following weekend. She was so distraught about that that she called her mother in the middle of the night and told her that she didn't feel well. Her mother got in the car and drove from Lexington to Highland Heights to spend the rest of the night with her daughter in Ryan's condo. Ryan didn't even know that the mother you know, that the mother came. He didn't know until after he woke up the next morning to see Shana's mother sleeping in the living room <laughs> with Shana. So Shana complained of chest pains and asked Ryan to take her to the ER. He refused to do it. He didn't want to, you know, he didn't want to mess with her anymore. Like he was over it. So Shana's mom took her. Shana still kept in touch with Ryan throughout the day to inform him of her ER visit and the medications that were prescribed to her. Ryan had plans with one of the new chicks later that evening, so he wasn't really focused on Shayna and her ailments. Now, it's fair to say that Shayna knew about Ryan's new girl, and that's why she became, quote, unquote, ill. Shayna later said that she never knew about Audrey, you know, the Miss Ohio chick that Ryan was talking to. But I call BS on that because Shayna actually friended Audrey two days before she became sick, you know, quote, unquote, sick. Yeah. So she, she knew about her. And remember, Shana had access to Ryan's account. So, and she even researched Miss Ohio online. You know, they already, they went back and looked at her, her Google searches and she even, wow. you know, did a search on the chick. So and she said that she didn't know her or didn't know anything about it. So all this became, you know, apparent that she kind of knew that he was going out with her. And that's why this whole event, um, chain of events happened. So it was also discovered that Shana didn't even go to the ER and was out shopping with her mom. <laughs> she Googled the symptoms of heart disease. And then those were the medications, you know, that they said that was treated for heart disease. That's the ones that she told Ryan that she was on to make, you know, the whole ordeal sound believable. Wow. So, yeah. On the evening of October 12th, Shana came over to Ryan's unannounced around 8.30 p.m., the same night of Ryan's date with Miss Ohio. 
At 8.54, Shana placed this call to the 911 dispatch. Kim Kelly, 911. Ma'am, I killed my boyfriend in self-defense. What did you kill him with? A gun, a loaded gun in the house. Can you tell me where the gun is right now? A gun is in the house. I, I laid it on the bookshelf. Where are you? I'm standing about 10 feet from his dead body. Okay, are you sure that he is dead? He's, he's dead, ma'am. He's completely dead. Okay. And how long ago did you shoot him? I don't know, 15, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, not even that long. Like 10 or 15, 15 minutes. minutes ago? Yeah. Okay, what's yeah. your name? My name is Shana Michelle Huber. The officers going to want me to stay on the line with you, so when you get when they get there, they're going to want to know where that gun is, and we want you to get out safely too, okay? Okay, are they going to arrest me? Uh, Ma'am, I don't know what they'll do. We're going to send, send them out. I'm going to stay on the line with you, okay? I mean, I'm not a murderer, ma'am. I just killed him. What, what, what happened exactly? What happened? He beat me and tried to carry me out of the house, and I came back in to get my things, and he was right in front of me, and he raced down and grabbed the gun, and I grabbed it out of his hand and pulled, pulled the trigger. Okay. All right. Do you need an ambulance? Have you been injured? I'm not injured, ma'am. I was thrown into the side of the couch. All right. What's his name? Ryan Carter Poston. He's an attorney in Cincinnati. Okay. Have you had a history of domestic violence with him? Yes. Okay. And is this your gun? No, this is his gun. He keeps loaded guns in the house. So he, he he's not slammed you into the couch, but you don't have any injuries? I don't have any injuries. I was just very frightened. He's just a lot bigger than me. He's 6'3", 200 pounds. I'm 5'8", 120. And he, and he picked me up. And I said, let me get my things at least if we're going to break up. And he threw me across the room. And I was very startled. I was laying on the floor. Okay. All right. And I killed him. Ma'am, you're sure he's not breathing at all? No, that's okay. They actually have someone that's outside almost right now, but I'm going to stay on line with you, okay? Ma'am, and then because he was twitching and I knew he was going to die anyway, and he was making funny noises, I shot him a couple more times just to kill him because I knew he would have been... I'm sorry, you said you shot him a couple more times after that? Yeah. I, I, How many times did you shoot him total? I don't know. Okay, because he was twitching and you knew he was going to die, so you shot him again? Enough to make sure he was dead because he was twitching so bad and I don't want to lay there and twist. So you shot him instead of calling 911? Yeah, I did because I knew he was going to die anyway. So at the end, I don't know if you guys heard that part. Wow. Wait, that. wait. Wait, did she? She shot him again because she knew he was going to die anyway. So she, wow, and he was twitching so bad that and she knew he was going to die anyway. She shot him some more. Like, wow, yeah. This, is, it, and in the beginning, no wonder she was like, He's dead, he's absolutely dead, or whatever mm -hmm. she said. No wonder she was so sure, girl. Overkill. She said, com He completely did. Wow, like, and they had the nerve to be like, Are they going to arrest me? Right, um, yes, wow. but yeah. So when the police went into the condo, they found Ryan on the, on the floor under his table. Shane was taken to the Highland Heights Police Department. When she got there, she began talking and talking and talking and talking. They said she went on for about three hours and they just kept taking, um, taking turns on who was in the room with her because she kept talking so much and she was just you know going on. So they just let her talk. So, I mean, I'm not sure if she was trying to build her case for being psychotic, but she did a good job at showing that she didn't have any remorse because the things that she was talking about was, it was kind of like, you know, it wasn't that she was sad about what happened or anything. She was just kind of, you know, telling her case or, or pleading. Oh, I can hear that happened. with the phone call. Not yeah. to interrupt you, but she went from all these, <laughs> right. <laughs> then she was speaking clearly. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Right. Now. Right. So, yeah, so she was charged with murder and was held on a $5 million bond. And with that bond being so high, she remained in jail until her court date, since no one was going to, um, no one put up the money to get her out. The trial started two and a half years later in April of 2015, and she entered a plea of not guilty and claimed self-defense and tried to paint, they tried to paint Shana as the victim in this situation. The neighbors said they heard two pops and then a few minutes later, they heard four more. Ryan was shot by Shana a total of six times. 
They later found her guilty of murder. She was sentenced to 40 years in prison. And in August of 2016, she was granted an appeal, overturning her conviction on the um, basis of one of the jurors was a felon and didn't disclose it. So Shana's retrial began August what? of 2018. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, but still they, you know, she, and then in the second trial that she had, she took the stand because the first time around, she didn't take the stand at all. So this next, her retrial, she took the stand and here's a snippet of her recount of the evening. And he picked me up from an awkward angle and threw me from the doorway of his bedroom into the other room. I thought that he was going to snap my neck because of the way that he was jerking my my head around. And he had all of his weight on me and he was, he had all of his weight on my body and he was jerking my head around with his hand in my hair. I don't believe I said that that night, no. And did you seek medical treatment? No. And it was offered to you multiple times, wasn't it? Yes. When he was first shot, he let out a really loud noise that sounded like an animal. It sounded like a bear, like some type of wild animal. So according to Huber's cellmate, she told her, she, I mean, this is Shana telling her cellmate during this time, quote, I knew he was going to die or have co a completely deformed face. He's very vain. He wants to get a nose, he wants to get a nose job. He's just that kind of a person. And I shot him right here, pointing to his face. And she says, I gave him the nose job he wanted. Oh my goodness. All right. So, That's evil. right. Wow. Shana later told police that she was on camera and it was shown on camera in an in interrogation room, you know, while she was doing this talking and talking when she was in there by herself for a minute, they have her um, saying, I did it. Yeah, I did it. And then she also was singing Amazing Grace. Like she was just going through different, what? I don't, yeah. So they just let her go and, you know, just recording it. But yeah, she was in there for a long time and just talking and doing a lot of weird stuff, but not enough to, you know, I guess make that she's crazy or, you know, psychotic or anything like that, but just enough. So the jury came back with another guilty verdict. She was sentenced to, again, to 40 years in prison. So she's now eligible for parole in 2032. So currently, 30-year-old Shana Hubers is in the Kentucky Correctional Institution for Women. And in other news or in side news on this, in June of 2018, Shana married a transgender woman that goes by the name Unique Taylor, who was in jail on a robbery <laughs> charges. But that, <laughs> that marriage only lasted for less than a year, and then they were divorced. She was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, but it wasn't to the point where she was able to, you know, plead insanity on this. So she is in prison until at least 2032, which is her earliest, you know, eligible for parole date. And that is it with Shana Hubers. But the crazy part about this is, is she has, I would say fans. I'm not sure if you want to call them fans or groupies or stalkers. What? or whatever but she has facebook pages that's dedicated to her she has different organizations there are people that are you know pleading for her you know wow her innocence and some saying she's guilty and she should stay there she's a monster you know the other side is you know she's innocent and she was abused and you know she needs to be let out because she was um, a victim of domestic violence so yeah and she gets like a whole bunch of mail every day you know like one of those kind of weird kind of cases where people are gravitating towards her i'm not sure why but she's kind of that's what i was sitting here wondering like why yeah yeah i get well i don't even know uh, pretty white girl i mean i was trying to think of another way to say it but it's just like it's just kind of like one of those kind of cases because She's a, oh, so her her beauty is like everybody's attracted i, to I that. think and i mean because if it was regular you know mm -hmm. some other girl it wouldn't be you know this much of a it would be she was in jail and that's just it but her it's mm -hmm. just like she gets tv interviews and facebook pages dedicated to her and fans and you know all these people are saying oh but she's you know but she needed help but she she was she was abused and like no when you're listening and you see this story or see what happened that's not abuse and even if she was the way she shot him six times and more after she was you know after he was down just because she she felt 
that he was just going to die anyway. So she shot right. him some more. That's what I was getting ready to say. The oh. things that she said out of her mouth is like, nah, you didn't just shoot him in self-defense. Shit. Right. Like, no, no. So, um, so yeah, so she's in jail. Thank goodness. And hopefully she stays there for the entire 40 years, but the way it's going, maybe not. We'll see though. But yeah, so that is it for Shanna Huber's Okay, sippers. So what we're going to do is we're going to transition into another segment that we call take another sip. And if you are a true sipper, then you already know what that's about. So, you know, something if we've seen it throughout our day to make us laugh, make us cry, make us think, make us take a double look at it. We just take another sip. Oh, who has to take another sip? So we're going to hold it up in the air. Hold up in it. (laughs) Until Demetrius tells us this story where we're going to have to just take another sip on it. Go, girl. Okay, I found something because I love legal stuff. Okay, I'm just in all that. Like, I think I should have been a lawyer or I was in my past life, <laughs> life, lifetime. Mm. But anyway, there is a legal murder zone in Yellowstone National Park. What? Wait a minute. Say what now? A legal there, murder zone? Is it? Mm-hmm. In Yellowstone National Park. Murder of what? Humans or animals? Um... It's not stated. You can just do whatever what? you want there. So let me <laughs> let me read a little bit of history for you, you oh, lovely nice. sippers and ladies. Okay. Yellowstone is located primarily in Wyoming and mm-hmm. draws millions of visitors every year and is one of the most popular tourist destinations in the United States. So with that said, let's read into this. Hmm. There's an area of Yellowstone National Park where you could theoretically escape a conviction for murder it's a legal zone called yellowstones i'm over here sipping i I have okay (laughs) (laughs) i'm still just confused yes it's a legal loophole that makes it possible to get away with murder it's yellow zone is i'm sorry it's yellowstones zone of death um that's kind of like a tongue twister for me Yellowstone's stone <laughs> zone big, of death. this area? Okay, let's get to it. There's, <laughs> <laughs> there's an area, 50 square mile region Whoa. in Yellowstone National Park. That's huge. Mm-hmm, where sloppy district boundaries would make prosecution of serious criminal offenses unconstitutional. In other words, a region where one could get away with murder. Wow. If you committed a crime within this zone, there could be no jury because nobody lives there. You know, you got to have hmm. a, a jury to oh, convict you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A okay. trial would be impossible and therefore you could not be convicted. That zone is known as, as the zone of death. I was just about to say, why don't everybody know about this? But I guess you don't want it to mm-hmm. get <laughs> I was getting ready to say, how in the world did you hear about this? Did somebody report it on the news or something? No, or I you just, doing, are you doing research? I like to look up, <laughs> <laughs> I like to look up like weird laws. Like Georgia has a lot of weird laws and stuff that people don't even know about. Like, okay. you can't walk a camel down the road Let's and see. <laughs> to have a zebra in your front yard. Like, stuff like right. that. Uh-huh. So I was just curious, you know, like what would be statewide laws and Yellowstone popped up as it has a zone of 50 mile, a 50 square mile region in Yellowstone Park where nobody can convict you because no one lives there in that district. So listen to this. No jurors would mean no jury, which would violate criminal defendants rights to a trial by jury. So there's none. And it's also in the article enshrined in Article Number Three, Section Two of the Constitution. OK, so. You know, I don't give the best advice most times. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I'm going to say this, but I mean, you guys don't probably don't do it. But sippers, if you know, if you have somebody that you're trying to, you know, get rid of, <laughs> do your research, do your research, figure out where it is, exactly where it is. Don't guesstimate. Make sure that, you know, you're within, yeah. you know, in other words, carry your compass with you. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you get the right coordinates. The right coordinates. That's crazy, though. That mm-hmm. is so crazy. Yeah, that is pretty wild. Mm-hmm. I've have, I have never heard of that. Like, yep, because nobody lives in that zone, and they also how do they said, even make that a zone then? If no one lives, no, like there's no, no one lives there. So, like, if anybody commit any kind of crime, like uh, you killing a, a state park animal that may have roamed out of the federal zone. If you kill him, you know, the extension ones, ain't nothing they can do to you. If you take a human there, I'm just saying now you don't have to take a human, but if <laughs> there is a murder that occurs, no one can convict you because there's no jurors there. There's no dish uh, in that district. There's no one that lives there. Now they did say it's people that live up in the mountains in that area, but you will really have to find them in order to pull them to have a jury by trial. So nobody's going to look for them so weird mm-hmm. i mean isn't that crazy i guess i i mean there's a yeah, 50 square mile wild. region wow mm-hmm. that's huge so i thought you was gonna say like a, you know a little tiny area like mm-hmm. you know though. Mm-hmm. but that's huge first of all i wouldn't go there what if i get lost i'm not finna mm-hmm. take you there and i get lost mm-hmm. <laughs> all the serial killers who were uh wondering what to do next as far oh as gosh. another place to we're not we're not crime. encouraging oh, serial no, killers. they're, they're listening to this up. like oh thanks sipping on wine i know oh right? my gosh i didn't think of that <laughs> i'm just, just kidding oh no no she not <laughs> Yeah, isn't that weird? Oh man, it is. That's pretty crazy. I'm surprised yeah. you actually found something yeah. to tell you that information. Like it yeah. shouldn't even be out there at all for anyone I, to know. I, I'm not going to encourage, but you can Google. But don't. I'm not encouraging mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. I would say don't <laughs> even take another sip to that one because I mean you don't even want to be it. sober okay. to look this up to get your plan <laughs> together because <laughs> you don't want to make no mistakes. Yeah. So, I mean, if you commit a crime within that zone, there could be no jury because nobody lives there. You would have to actually go find someone in order to be convicted of your crime. Wow. Why don't they just incorporate that that into the nearest zone and then make it, you know, like it don't even make sense to. I, nope, I know, they can't. Okay. They said if it happens within that zone of death, mm. nothing you can do. The mm. serial killers union must have paid the authorities the there to um, <laughs> 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 they, they paid the authorities there to come up with this shit because there's I mean, no way. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Guess their dues are going to There's something. There's some kind of backhand or backdoor handshake that we know nothing mm-hmm. about in order for this to actually mm-hmm. be a thing. That is, wow. You know, it make you wonder if it's other little zones throughout the yeah. United States. Maybe the KKK that... uses that zone for um, not oh, to kill people, but maybe to have meetings or something. I mean, there's... Oh. <laughs> I know. There's some kind of backdoor handshake. So, Somebody like, what if... That, that maybe, ground. like, if you're right at the state's border, like, you know how you go... I don't think that's our land. That belongs to mm-hmm. someone. So, you know, <laughs> it might be a little open margin, right? There. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but yeah, I thought I'd share that. So, you know, if you go to Yellowstone, you know, just to well, thank you for that. Be a tourist, <laughs> you know, try to look for that area and just go, ah. Oh. See, we're here, here about relationship advice, all the other kind of advice. And, you know, <laughs> if you need to. No, 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 no. We're not encouraging that. But you're telling them so. Hey. Oh, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're here to help. Well, hey, we're talking about true crime. I had to associate yeah. the two. That was a good that one, was, though. That was that a good was one. A... So you guys take your sips to that one. <laughs> I mean, unless you need to be sober to devise your plan. But, yeah. Okay. Well, thank in, you. In the zone of death. The zone of. I'm, the uh, zone of death at Yellowstone. National okay. Park. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna look that up. Yeah. Oh, okay. But we might have to delete this um this episode if something transpires. If some, oh gosh, don't, yeah, don't blame <laughs> us. And I'm like, I had no idea because that is clearly no online. Idea. You will not blame me. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Well, thank you for that. Take another sip. That was actually a really, really good one. And yeah. yeah. Yes, I got y'all. Yes, one was like, "Wow!" Wow. (laughs) Yes, I got you. (laughs) Man, all right. Well, sippers, we've come to the end already. Already here. It's like ready. It's like I just said hi. 
when you said we come to the end, this is so random, but <laughs> I thought about the whole video montage that was being played when we were taking our little wine tour. And it made me think of the whole Boys to Men song, The End of the Road, because I remember oh, that video playing oh. dur during the say, huh? oh. <laughs> <laughs> But let me tell you guys, okay, so about this wine tour that we were talking about, if you guys live in Georgia or even Tennessee or mm -hmm. North Carolina, like, because it's North Georgia, so you guys can get there from, you know, any of these border states. What is it called? The Atlanta Wine Tour? I think it was just called the Atlanta Wine Tour yeah. Company. But even if you don't do it through them, you know, just go through some of the um, the North Georgia wineries. I I mean, I've heard about the wineries in Georgia, but I was like, Psh, that's not, you know, those are, they're actually nice. They really are. Beautiful yeah. views. Nice. Not, very nice. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. So if you don't want to do it through the tour, you can still go to that their website and look at the places that they go. And then you can kind of, you know, go on your own because you kind of really don't need a tour guide you know for that if you just get the names of the wineries but yeah we had like a total of i think it was like four tastings at each one yes mm -hmm. or you could get yeah. a glass or a full glass at some places mm -hmm. so it was it was really fun um I you had you time go to back? Chill. i'm definitely i'm doing the mm -hmm. um i'm gonna do a couple's version of that in the fall so you guys are gonna be invited but um yeah, I, I asked my husband first, but you know, he's super busy. He was like, uh, not right now. We can go <laughs> later. And I was like, I don't want to wait till later. So right. I said, well, I'm going to go now with the girls, but we can mm -hmm. still go later. So yeah, I'm definitely going back. Yeah, that would be fun. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, it'd be fun for me. My dude don't drink, but that just means oh, wow. more for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, you get two. Yeah, I don't get but, two. because I mean, And I want to uh, stay in a room this time. Like that's what I was telling my husband. I want to get a room. So that way when we get back, yep, when we get okay. back downtown, we just chill out for the night instead of mm -hmm. driving back home. That would yeah. be nice too. Feeling like you got to rush back home kind mm -hmm. of feeling. Mm, that's nice. Yeah. Well, let me know about that. That sounds fun. Yeah, though. I definitely oh, will. Yeah. All right. Well, um, do you guys have any closing thoughts though before we leave our wonderful sippers? No, it was but fun your, as always. That story was, I think she need to just stay in jail. I'm just sorry. Me too. She should not story. be eligible just, for no parole. Mm -hmm. No. She that was everybody. intentional. That was very mm -hmm. intentional. Especially they say they said she's real smart. She knows what she's doing and things yeah. she's saying and how she's trying to play this up, you know. But. And she has a fan base. Mm -hmm. Let her stay there yeah. and keep collecting her mail. So sippers, if you guys came and you guys are still listening to us, thank you again. But hit that where, wherever you're looking at, I don't know if you have a like button, a heart button, uh, what else is there? Thumbs yeah. up button. Uh, yes. <laughs> hit the share buttons, the comment if you just want to say hi. You know, okay. We would appreciate all of that. We we uh, appreciate all of you guys' support for real. Like it's really. Yes, awesome. thank you. And we do like to see those messages come through, and we appreciate you guys. So until next time, I guess um, that's it for this episode we hate to leave but we gotta, but we gotta go, go. Yeah. bye sippers <laughs> bye ladies bye, guys. bye.